I'm Jeff Philbin, and if you're thinking of having chicken for dinner tonight, hold everything because we have a delicious idea for how to make it with a few tasty twists. We're pan searing chicken and serving it with mushroom and asparagus risotto and a homemade broccolini chimichurri. Welcome to Dinner Diaz. My guest today is making a return visit from the Dan and Tampa's hotel floor. Denier Boulahe is their executive chef. He calls the kitchen his culinary playground and was raised in the Midwest with roots in Guatemala, Peru, and Mexico. Quite the combination, my friend, and welcome back, more importantly. No, thank you for having me back. Really excited. Thank we're you. We're stoked to have you because the last time you joined us, you shared how you made shrimp and grits that were absolutely out of this world. And if you missed it, that episode is ready and waiting for you at dinnerdias.com. And today's recipe, we've got pan seared chicken thighs, mushroom and asparagus risotto, and a broccolini chimichurri. Where do we start? So we're gonna get started right over here with the, mm -hmm. with our uh, risotto. We already have our broth that's uh, at a slow simmer, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna add our shallots to our hot oil right now to start cooking them down. So, what kind of broth do we have here? A chicken broth. Just a chicken yep. broth. All right. Very, very light, simple. Don't want it to be too overpowering. Okay. And we're going straight in with those shallots. You said. Yep. And as we add the shallots to it, we add a little bit more shallots than we traditionally would add mm -hmm. to a uh, risotto. But the reason for that is because of our ingredients that we're using in the risotto, right? So we have really earthy mushrooms. We have the beautiful vibrancy of the asparagus. So then we add this amount of shallots because if we cook them down, they release their natural sugar mm -hmm. and they become sweet. So now you have all of those components playing with one another, all of those flavors balancing out one another. I love it. Sweeter than an onion? Sweeter than an onion, yes. Sweeter than the but onion. If you don't have shallots, you can always use a red onion as well. Okay. So you're going to keep on cooking them down, let them do their own thing, right? Let them brown up. You see that? So you that's can... the color that we're looking for, is we're looking for them to brown up a little bit. Yep, here. brown up just a little bit, right? You okay. want them to get to the point where they're trans a little bit translucent, and then we <laughs> take them just a little further. Just a little bit further. And right now, those are getting that translucent. But meanwhile, we've got this beautiful, what's going to be a chimichurri? Yes. So I've already pre. Um, Charred the broccolini, okay. and the broccolini is one of those fun things that if you want to, you can you can char it, you can roast it in the oven. Mm -hmm. If you want to saute it, you can saute it as well. But you don't want to take it all the way. You want to take it about 70% of the way. Mm -hmm. And the beauty with broccolini is that you can do it with it because it's much more of a mild flavor mm -hmm. than you would get versus a broccoli okay. or a, a, another green like that, right? It's in the same family with cabbage as well, right? Sure. So it's less bitter. But less bitter. Okay. Yep. So, and this is actually right here, if, as you can see, our broccolini has those beautiful, nice, long stems, thin mm -hmm. stems to it mm -hmm. that are nice and sweet, right? So, we've already chopped this up. We're going to mix this into our bowl. So, what is, you know, chimichurri 101? Like, what is a chimichurri sauce? So, a chimichurri sauce is traditionally made with just parsley, mm -hmm. right? Um, a little bit of oregano, and um, we have that right here, and it's an, Argent it's an Argentinian um, for the better steak, a, a steak sauce, salsa, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then it has a little bit of oregano, red pepper flakes, and all those other ingredients. Mm -hmm. And it just goes great with any good churrasqueria, right? Mm -hmm. Anytime you're having anything that's been cooked over coals or that's just really rich in flavor yeah. or, you know, something fun like we're doing today with the chicken that, that isn't as impressive, this is really going to bring um, the, the flavor to the party. Absolutely. But there's also the acids behind it, too, that allow for just that brightness to come through with it as well. Yes. Because this is totally uncooked. This is just a beautiful sauce that you can be able to use the room temperature ingredients. Shelf stable though after you're done with it. Yes, and this is actually better made a few days ahead of time, yeah. right? So um, you make this the day before, you get the nice beautiful um, garlic in there, and you want to mince your garlic, right? So, so what's going on next then? So right there we have a red wine vinegar. Okay. We, so we have two components that bring acidity to it, right? Red wine vinegar and fresh squeezed lemon juice. Love it. Right, and we add that into there. We mix it up, right? Mix it around so we make sure that everything's nice and mixed. And the thing to a great chimichurri, right, is it's, you're, you're really paying respect to the ingredients of something so simple that's really gonna come yeah. together and, and, and bring that much flavor to what it is that we're making, right? So, mm. you know, we have the cilantro, we have the parsley, the fresh garlic, the pepper, the oregano to give it a little bit of that flavor as well. Mm -hmm. And then you wanna use an amazing extra virgin olive oil. Okay. This is where I tell everybody, Extra virgin olive oil is a finishing olive oil. It's yeah. meant for this. 
and this is where we're gonna have a beautiful extra virgin olive oil. This that we're is gonna the good add stuff it. that you gotta add. This is this is the good stuff, right? Don't cheat yourself. This is you don't want anything mixed. You don't want anything not extra virgin, right? Um, because the nuttiness of the of the extra virgin olive oil mm -hmm. is what really brings all of this together mm -hmm. as well, right? So. You know, and depending on how you like your chimichurri, how you want it, I believe the recipe might call for a cup, cup and a half. Feel free to judge however you want, right? Okay. If you want to add a little bit more, you want your chimichurri to have a little, to be a little more um, loose, then you can feel free mm -hmm. to do that. So when you look at how beautiful that comes together, we have all that right there. Mm -hmm. We're going to add a little bit of salt just right over, right over there to mix into it. Love it. To get this chimichurri recipe and how to do everything else that we're going to be making, including the chicken and the risotto, grab the recipe at dinnerdias.com. We have all of it ready to print with the exact amounts, the ingredients, and the directions. All you have to do is get your phone, open the camera app to take a photo, but don't snap one. Just point the camera at your TV and at that black and white box down there. It's our QR code, and when your phone sees it, a link to us should pop right up. Now, you had said you want to sweat these, make these translucent. I see a little bit of color coming in. Yes. We still want to go a little bit darker. No, you're good right this there. This is right? good. They're starting, they're starting okay. to brown up already Perfect. a little bit, right? So when we get to this point right here, if we um, you can we can take our mushrooms, mm -hmm. add about half of the mushrooms that we have right there. And what type of mushrooms do we have here? We have cremini mushrooms. Okay. You can use about any you can use any mushroom you want, okay. right? And you just said half. Yep, you can add half of it right there, yeah. Okay. Um, and then we're gonna um, saute them and allow them to Allow the allow them to cook down. As our mushroom as our mushrooms are cooking, mm -hmm. um, we can also feel free to add in our herbs and garlic that we have as well. Okay. So what do we have here from an herb standpoint? So here from an herb standpoint, we have a little bit of thyme. We have a little bit of uh, rosemary as well. Okay. Um, and you can add whatever herbs you like, right? If you're a fan of tarragon, a fan of mm -hmm. dill, I mean, you really can't go wrong with. And you herbs, said garlic right? as well at this point. Yep. Okay. Add, add garlic as well at that point. And then saute that together, and you can hear it, right? You, you know, the beauty about cooking, it's, it's one of those things that takes all of your senses, right? Mm -hmm. So the symphony of the crackling that's starting to happen in the background, right? That's exactly what we want to mm -hmm. we want to hear and what we want to see. And we like to add the herbs in at this point because they need a little bit of that oil um, that's in there. And you can, that actually... Now you're that, starting to smell it. That like, it's starting right to, like... at you, right? Oh. You know? oh. And that's the beauty, that's that rosemary, right? That really strong stemmed um, herb mm -hmm. that we have in there, right? That's really starting to take a center stage um, in our mushrooms that we have going on over here. I absolutely love it because when we come back, how Chef Denier makes perfect pan fried chicken and we finish up our ridiculously rich risotto ahead on Dinner Diaz. Welcome back to Dinner Diaz. My guest today is Chef Denier Boulay. He's with the Dan, the restaurant in Tampa's hotel floor. He's been sharing a recipe for pan seared chicken thighs, mushroom and asparagus risotto, and broccolini chimichurri. Before the break, we made our chimichurri, mixing together broccolini, cilantro, parsley, garlic, red pepper flakes, and lemon juice with red wine vinegar, and a good slug of the good stuff, extra virgin olive oil, and let it all sit for those flavors to really come together. Then we started on our risotto, cooking up shallots, adding mushrooms, thyme, and rosemary, and a little seasoning, then garlic, which means it must be ready right now for the rice. Yes, we're 100% ready. What you type of rice that. do we have here? So we have a little arborio rice, right? Mm -hmm. It's a little, it's a short grain Italian um, risotto rice that we're using. Cut. And this is That's gonna good. go straight in. Yep. Um, we're making sure that all of our ingredients are well combined, and then we're starting to give our rice, um, we're starting to process with the rice, and um, getting those oils and all of that ready in there to start releasing the starches mm -hmm. right before we add our wine to it right now. And then, you know, as I'm moving this around, should I be afraid that anything looks like it's on the bottom, like it's overcooked or anything like that with our mushrooms? No, that's exactly what you want. That's where all <laughs> of that flavor is, right? Mm -hmm. So what's happened, the liquid's evaporated and now all that beautiful flavor is right on the bottom. And when we add our white wine to it, it's gonna deglaze and all that flavor is just gonna come right back mm -hmm. into life, right into the dish. Mm -hmm. And as this arborio rice takes on all the flavor, is there anything I should be listening for? No, so we're we're almost ready. We're almost ready right there, right okay. where it's at. You're ready to add the wine to that. Okay. And how much wine's going in here? 
Uh, about a half a cup, I believe. About a half a cup. All right. And you hear that? You hear all that sizzling happening? Mm -hmm. You all that flavor is just coming up from the bottom of that pan, right? Mm -hmm. And you can see how it's got a really rich, um, dark color in it. Yeah. And that's all just natural from the ingredients that we already have in there, the mushrooms. You can see how the bottom of the pan is starting to clear up already. Uh -huh. And all that beautiful flavor just went right back into what we're making right there. I love it. To have this risotto for your dinner and the chicken and the chimichurri, just visit dinnerdance.com to grab Chef Denier's recipe. We have all the amounts, the ingredients, and the directions waiting for you to print. Just scan the QR code to get to us. All right. Can I just let this be? Yeah, that's perfect. So uh, actually, our wine's almost deglazed all the way on okay. the bottom. You so want to... that we can start adding a little bit of uh, chicken, uh, chicken uh, stock to that as okay. well. Okay. And then the traditional way. We going ladle by ladle? Ladle by ladle, yes, sir. All right. Then I will monitor this part because what do we have over here with our chicken? So right here, we already have our chicken breast. We have a really hot pan, which you can see that right over here. We have uh, an, uh, an oil blend in there. Our chicken's been seasoned already, and we're going to set this in skin side down. You can't be afraid of it being nice and high. You hear the way that that beautiful sizzle happens? Mm -hmm. And you want that so then the skin can get really nice and crisp and get that beautiful um, golden brown on the outside of it. So. We've and got, what did you season it with? So, use a little bit of our kosher salt, black pepper, granulated garlic, and a little bit of dill, right? Okay. Um, dill really does a wonderful job um, to uh, bring to life that uh, beautiful light tones of the chicken. I like that. And you can hear that sizzling right there. Feel free to put a little bit of pressure down on that thigh. Let that skin get nice and crisp, nice and beautiful. Mm -hmm. And how long will that take to be able to get that color that you want per side? Anywhere about between two to four minutes. Okay. Yep. Very and the chicken good. will be ready and tell you itself when it's ready to get flipped, right? All right. And I don't know if you can smell that already, it's right? It absolutely smells fantastic because while our risotto cooks and our chicken sears, we're changing gears and taking a quick break. But don't forget to come back before we overcook it because well, we wouldn't want to be waiting on you now. So Chef Denier is going to be back with us showing us how to finish up a risotto with bites and make this chicken even more delicious than it already is. Because yes, there will be butter ahead on Dinner Diaz. Welcome back to Dinner Diaz. Ideas for dinner from great chefs to great viewers, and that means you. Today, we're making a meal with Chef Denier Boulahe, executive chef with The Dant, which is the restaurant at the bottom of Tampa's hotel floor. He's been sharing how to make pan-seared chicken thighs, mushroom and asparagus risotto, and a broccolini uh, chimichurri. Too much for one meal. Not for us, my <laughs> friends. Before the break, we added our rice to the risotto, plus a little wine, then start adding in stock, and remember to always be stirring. Then we start our chicken thighs, dropping our dried and seasoned chicken into a hot pan to get a good sear. So what's next? So next, now that our, uh, it, we've gotten a beautiful sear on one side, we're gonna flip it over. Mm -hmm. You see how nice and golden brown that is mm -hmm. right there? And then we're going to allow the bottom side to cook just a little longer. And, and you want to be patient with this one here because you're not getting any tension from that skin, you yeah. know, sticking to the pan. Why is that? Because it's already caramelized, right? So that's, that natural cooking process has happened right there. And it comes off. It doesn't stick. It's nice and crisp mm -hmm. and ready to go. So that, you want to allow the chicken to do its own thing, right, with the pan. They all work um, with one another. And it, it, it's like cooking fish, cooking anything skin side down. It's going to tell you when it's ready. It's ready. So okay. That's why it's important for it to be a hot pan, too, right? Cast iron necessary for this? Nope, not at all. No. I just like it. I enjoy it. It okay. conducts great heat, and it allows it, and it, and it allows it to all come together well. So okay. Right. We got one more ladle worth in here. Yes. You can see how our result is blossomed. It's starting to, it's gotten uh, larger, right? It's pumped up a little bit. It's just absorbed all of that liquid. Yes. And you can smell it. Oh. How do we finish this risotto? So the risotto, we're gonna we're, we're gonna finish it today with um, we're gonna finish it today with the, we have some asparagus, some Parmesan cheese, mm -hmm. um, and then a little bit of herbs as well that we're gonna put over the top of it. So yeah, go ahead and start add, 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 and add as much cheese as you want. As much oh, as don't you, don't you want, worry, right? I will <laughs> add as much cheese. I'm going all in for that one here, and then heavy cream. Yeah, a little mm -hmm. bit of heavy cream to help. Uh, 
cream it out just a little bit right there. Okay. And then we save the asparagus at the end because we don't want it to get lost in the in the risotto itself, right? So then you still have those nice, beautiful um, pieces of asparagus in there. And now the asparagus, was that already cooked? Yeah, so um, we part cooked the asparagus, we blanched it, um, and then that way, so then it's ready just to go. Okay. You can start smelling the cheese now, starting to kind of melt with everything. Oh, yeah. Too. And you see, you see how the color of it changed, the consistency totally. changed? Totally. You, you want your risotto to be undo, right? You want it to fall into place when you set it on the plate. You don't want it to be too tight. You don't want it to be too loose. And this is exactly where we want it. As the cheese starts to melt, the last bit of the cream and all of it comes together, you're going to add your parsley right in there as well. Stir that in there and then just allow it to continue to slowly come down to the consistency that you're looking for, oh, right? I okay. love it. For a restaurant quality risotto for your dinner, all you need is the recipe from Chef Denier. And it's waiting for you to grab at dinnerdiaz.com. Just scan the QR code on your screen to get there. All right. All right, so we've now got our chicken right over here. It's been cooking for a little bit on the other side. Once again, mm -hmm. about two to four minutes, whatever that time looks like, okay. right? Um, we're gonna add our garlic to it as well, right in there. Gonna allow that to get right in there with a little bit of that oil. We're gonna want it to brown up just a little bit before mm -hmm. we add in our white wine, mm -hmm. butter, and our chicken stock, right? And we're gonna leave it skin side up because once we add the liquid to it, we don't want that skin to get to get soft, right? We want it to remain and still keep that beautiful crispness yeah. to it, right? And you can smell that garlic starting to come together in here, starting to brown in mm -hmm. there, work its way with the chicken. And it's already, you can see how it's kind of it's come up on its own, right? We're gonna add a little bit of, the, we're gonna add the white wine. How important is it to not overcrowd the pan for a dish like this? On this one, you, you, you wanna give it a little bit of breathing room, right? Yeah. But it's okay for there to be a little bit of crowding, right? Because it's that steam, it's all of that that comes together, keeps mm -hmm. it all together as well, right? So our, um, our chicken stock is, uh, uh, I apologize, our wine is cooking down a little bit right now. We're gonna put our butter right into the middle right there. Allow that, allow that to melt, get right in there. Just a little butter. Just a little bit just, of butter. Just a right? little, that wasn't a, no, that was like the whole thing right there. Oh, come on and now. And we're gonna go chicken stock right over there. About a half a cup right there. And you want it so then it comes up just a little bit underneath halfway point of where the chicken is. And then we're gonna put a cover on it and allow it to do its own and thing. And how much longer will that need to do its thing? Anywhere from six to eight minutes. Easy breezy. If you just tuned in and you wanna see any of today's recipe again, or if you miss Chef Denier's previous appearance and that shrimp and grits that he made with, God, man, that ham, come on now. <laughs> Folks, watch Dinner Diaz anytime over on YouTube. We're at Dinner Diaz. Go browse our recipe archive. That's what Herbert McRae did. They were watching my seafood special with Captain Dylan Hubbard and asked, could you save the skeleton and use it for a stock? Would love a recipe for it. Yes, you can. Don't throw it away. You can do so much with it. A little bit of water, some carrots, some onions, some celery, um, a little bit of some white wine. What else would you add? Would you add any herbs to it? Yeah, I would put a little bit of bay leaf in there, maybe uh -huh. a little bit of thyme in there as well. Totally. So. Little lemon? Yeah, a little bit of lemon, right? And that's the beauty. You can have as much fun as you want and what you want to put into it. Just complement that subtlety of the fish and let the fish shine to make a beautiful stock. And whether you're watching us online or on TV, we're taking a quick break while our chicken finishes up. And when we come back, we'll let you know how it all tastes ahead on Dinner Diaz. Welcome back to Dinner Diaz with an idea for dinner from Chef Denier at the Dan. That's the restaurant in Tampa's hotel floor. And today he's back with us sharing our chicken recipe, but not just any chicken recipe. We've been making pan seared chicken thighs with a mushroom asparagus risotto and a chimichurri sauce made with broccolini. My friend, this is too beautiful to start eating, but that is the part of the show that we must go straight into because everyone wants to know how it all comes together. You go on chicken first, you go on risotto first. You go on chimney first, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go chimney and risotto first. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> all right, deal, 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 deal. All right, I'm gonna follow your lead because I see right there the perfect pocket 
for all those flavors to come together. <laughs> Dude. That shimmy right there. Come on now, man. <laughs> Walk us through the flavors of that again. Well, you have that beautiful bright notes of the herbaceous chimichurri over the top of it, but there's still a little bit of smokiness because we charred the broccolini. Mm -hmm. But then that creamy, that creaminess from the polenta, the earthiness of the mushrooms, that umami from the parma, from the Parmesan cheese that's right inside of there. Yeah. They all just blend so well with one another. One cuts through another, leaving your palate ready and savoring the next bite to come. All right. What do you think of it? I mean, you, I mean, you're telling us how it is. What's the real verdict on it from your side? Because uh, I already have mine ready to go. So you tell me what, what you really think of it all. I'm thinking that Dan might have a new chicken dish coming on the menu. So stay tuned. <laughs> God honest truth right there. This is an absolute winner, dude. I mean, like everything, just that layers of complexity, you killed it, man. You you killed it. This is now the second time, and I mean, literally, we gotta have you back for another third, my friend, because this one here, absolute winner. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thanks again to Denier Boulahe. The deets on the Dan, where he's the executive chef, are all at dinnerdiaz.com, along with the recipes for everything we've made today. If you make any of it, send us a photo and let us know how it tasted. I'm Jeff Philbin. Thanks for watching, and see you next time with more Dinner Diaz.